Hello and welcome everyone to another weekly market commentary from Stashaway. With us, of course, our Chief Investment Officer, Freddie Lim. Hey, Freddie. Hi there again. Uh, good to see you this week. Yeah, it's good to see you as well. Still looking strong there at home. <laughs> so, uh, no, all good. Uh, all good on my end as well. Um, I think um, we got quite a bit to, to, to touch on today. So I suggest we get straight, uh, straight to it, Freddie. Um, obviously, you know, um, election full swing. You know, there's a lot of posturing, as we already mentioned a couple of weeks ago, uh, by Donald Trump as well, especially on the foreign affairs side of things, right? Let alone the whole discussion about the U.S. Postal Service over the last five days. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a good one, Philip. Um, I think it's trying to stop people from voting uh, easily because yeah. uh, all the polls are saying um, there's a 95% chance that Biden would win the election. So <laughs> not surprising. Not surprising he's trying to do a few things there his way, right? That At least the, the things that he can control by installing someone in the postal service to, to head that. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, for benefits of our, 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 our uh, users, uh, the, the whole fuss about the postal service is that it, it's always losing money for years for, for very different reasons. Um, but uh, Trump is not really giving the, the, the $10 billion uh, that they need to continue to function. And that may actually hit the, how the balance is being distributed and received uh, in the upcoming elections. It could really create confusion and delays uh, with how the election is going to be handled. Um, when you are uh, uh, trailing, that's probably what you should do. Yeah. Yes, try to create confusion, right? That's that's a good way go, to move forward. But anyways, uh, with that being said, I think we... Uh, we had some other news items, uh, also including the US and China as well, right? But uh, let's talk about the dollar drop, right? Obviously, the dollar reached highs during the you know market drop in March, right? Um, I think at some point it was like 137 even, right? Um, now we're, you know, the dollar obviously has been dropping steadily ever since the Federal Reserve inter, uh, you know, intervened into the markets here during the drawdown. How do you see that dollar drop affect people's, you know, investment portfolios and in general going forward? Where, where does it leave us with? Well, well, firstly, um, recall that um, as the stimulus came in in March, uh, we actually mentioned this as well, in the sense that massive money printing by the Fed is unmatched by the other side, because in the currency, there's always a pair. There's two current countries involved, and the U.S. obviously is going to to, to print a lot more than the other side. So the dollar trend is a midterm, uh, perhaps even a long-term trend, right? And the mechanics of how it works is that the Fed has a lot of facilities to supply US dollar offshore through global central banks. And whenever there's a shortage of dollar uh, liquidity among themselves, they will start swapping currencies. And hence, there was never an issue with a shortage of US dollar outside of the US. And that is another reason why technically, whenever those facilities are drawn down seasonally to meet supply and demand of trade flows, you can see a dollar uh, decline again. And that, that's really started like the last couple of days, right? So this is just to give the background for the users. Now, in terms of uh, impact on investments, uh, Philip, as you mentioned, um, that's twofold, right? I mean, uh, gold, which, which is a very, very good uh, proven hedge for the dilution of fiat paper money, is obviously going to do well in this environment. It's a very medium term thing, although the prices sort of scares people, right? But it is the right thing to view it as part of a portfolio that provides insurance against the first events, against a dilution of paper money, right? So that's the first row of what the dollar means. In terms of the second part of it, it means that when you invest, you got to start thinking about returns in your home currencies now. If the dollar is going to be weak for medium term and if you do well in u.s technology for example right let's say you invest a hundred dollars it grows for 140 dollars but if there's a 20 percent looming depreciation in the u.s dollars you can you that what it means is that in local currency terms you're not making 40 percent you're only making 12 percent right this has huge implication because it means that you should also look for although not fantastic return but you should also look for uh, uh, regional assets to, to own just to diversify your currency risk, right? So mm -hmm. it is a very difficult, very complex times for, for investors, so that's, and that's understandable. 
Yeah, no, I think you, you need to hit the nail on the head there with the uh, diversified portfolios, which we always preach in all of our videos, right? Uh, and especially on a, on a global scale as well. Um, staying global, um, trade talks, right? Uh, obviously, we've been covering this now probably, yeah, well, for the last two and a half years uh, because it's been ongoing uh, and intensifying, obviously, with the election coming up. Um, there were supposed to be some trade talks happening last weekend already, right? And now going forward, um, these have been now officially canceled indefinitely. Um, and it doesn't seem like before November there will be much movement happening, right? Uh, how do you see that impact? Uh, well, uh, it just means that the US-China relationship has really soured to a, to a point that they can't talk anymore. Um, and also is uh, COVID-19 makes it very difficult for the Chinese to to meet the, the purchases they, they promise on products like agriculture, right? Um, but what it means is that there's a lot of bullying as well. The way the Chinese view it is that in the recent spat where the U.S. is also banning Huawei from accessing uh, parts uh, that's commercial in nature, like commercial chips, um, that sort of uh, is a blatant bullying tactics, uh, the way the Chinese would, would look at it, um, in the name of national security. And uh, so these things are ongoing. It's not going to change. The reason the market is not reacting a lot to it is because of uh, Joe Biden's massive lead over Trump. As you know, the, the Democrats are more interested in taxing the rich a lot than trying to fight a trade war with China. Uh, so, th so they have different priorities. Yes, no, I, that, that's, that's, that's true indeed. Uh, for the next topic, before we get into the user's questions, I think it comes on the backdrop of what we just talked about. But last night, the S&P 500 even now reached new highs, right? Um, so it's something we obviously covered as well quite a bit. Um, so, you know, we, you naturally get questions from people such as, hey, look, we had a new high. What does it mean for my portfolio? Should I be, you know, rethinking my risk level? Should I, you know, go more defensive? Uh, or should I leave it as is? Because when a vaccine comes, it might even go higher than that, right? Um, so where do you stand on that topic? Well, I, I would say this, it depends on where your portfolio risk point sits. If you're on our platform and your statutory risk index is a, a very high risk one, you are obviously more vulnerable and sensitive to a correction. And as we always see, um, you know, markets always break and make new highs. But the moment the media fans that new high a lot, right, you tend to have some sort of retracement. So if you choose a high risk point, you should know what you're getting into, right? If you're concerned, that's time to review to your risk level, bring it down. Um, conversely, if you have a risk point that's too low, uh, very low, and you're overly concentrated in bonds, then your concern is on the other side, right? If inflation goes up and bond markets start reacting. So either way, you will be sensitive. So when you are concerned, try to bring your risk point towards the balanced portfolios. On our platform, this means that the statutory risk indices are going to be around 10 to 16 percent that's the area where the portfolios get a lot of balancing acts what i meant by balancing act is that there's a lot of different asset types that balances each other out and there's a lot of intelligent diversification behind it so diversification uh, is uh, if you want more diversification you should sort of uh, gravitate towards the balance risk point in my personal opinion yeah and um you know something uh, to think about for everyone, right? To revisit these at least once a year, to just think about, hey, how has how has it been for me, right? Am I worried all the time or not? Uh, you know, am I reaching, am I on track to reaching my goals, right? So one thing is, you know, having a risk index that might be too low, but you still can't reach your goals, right? Um, so that we suggest always for everyone to do. Um, so let's move on to some of the user questions. Um, so, and if we're not answering yours today. We will in one of the future sessions, but, uh, or if you ever wanted to ask us something, just put them down below in the comment section. But let's go with um, Gautam Nakpa's question, Freddy. Um, he kind of um, continues, we already touched gold a little bit here, right? But I think this is just a continuation of that. Um, he's saying that the recent equity market rally has seen gold move to all time highs amid a risk on environment. So, by having these high correlations, it makes him think that the beta has increased actually quite sharply, right? So do you think that makes gold vulnerable? And most importantly, given its correlation to risk, as it is still a worthy hatch 
given its volatility at these levels? Well, here's the thing. Uh, we get this a lot as well. Another way to ask the question is the stock market is so high and the gold, gold prices are so high. Who is right or who is wrong? <laughs> One, the thing is that the whole debate misses the point that they are both going up, not because they are correlated or not, not because they're thinking, you no, know, stocks thinking that, uh, that we're going to recover or gold things are the worst ending. No, it's got nothing to do with, with any of these. They are just moving purely because of monetary stimulus. The monetary stimulus is so massive and through the money multiplier process that's by design a core part of our banking system, right? Because of uh, fractional reserves, uh, bank can lend out the remaining uh, printed money. Uh, that printed money in multiple uh, times, right? And in that fashion, uh, that provided a joke to all asset classes. Uh, if you go across bonds, you go across gold, you go across stocks, uh, everyone is actually going up. And that, that all of them are reflecting the same information. And the information is don't fight the Fed. Yeah. So um, if that is not changing, and that's not going to change, the pandemic is still going on, the vaccine, an effective vaccine is yet to be discovered, mass production and distribution is other challenges around the vaccine, even if it's found. We have a medium term a pretty long-term issue going on here. The monetary stimulus is likely to stay at least for the medium term, if not longer. And that means the dollar depreciation is not going to change. Gold appreciation is not going to change. They all serve to, to they are giving us the same information. They are, so gold will remain an effective uh, hedge uh, for any globally diversified portfolio, for any multi-asset portfolios, you need to have enough gold to hedge the dilution on paper money. And it's got nothing to do with inflation. It's just sure fact that currencies are just being, there's just more currencies going around. Even if you don't see inflation coming in, right? That is self dilute the value of the paper money. So the hedge is, in my personal opinion, and by the numbers, by centuries of historical track record, gold is high for a good reason and it will remain an effective hedge for the medium term. Yeah. And Jason Lim, uh, on the next question, he's asking, um, or he actually says, Freddie explained stimulus packages and M1 and M2 money supply in previous videos, right? So how has the stimulus package helped in the crisis? Because we're still seeing businesses shutting, and how would further stimulus packages help, right? So he's alluding to the fact that we may have not seen the worst yet, right? Because, you know... Well, uh, here's the thing. Um, uh, let me give you an example on airline, right? Like you used to, without a stimulus, you could have gone to the government and asked for a bailout or aid, and the government would give you a lot of conditions and how you're going to pay them back in 10 years' time, or how many people you need to maintain on your payroll, and so on and so forth. But that didn't happen because now you can simply issue a new bond, and in fact, issue a, as long maturity as you can, uh, just issue a new bond, and the, uh, the, and the Fed would be the one buying it because of the stimulus. That is the, the, the function of the monetary stimulus. And even better, before the Fed came in, fund managers, knowing the Fed comes in, will come in, they buy first. So we've seen a lot of famous fund manager uh, raising funds for, for a long term, with a long term lockup period, uh, the, the so called distress uh, credit funds, right? And there's a lot of such funds being set up to, to do precisely this, right? So, in a way, this is monetary stimulus. Then the other type of stimulus is government stimulus, which is more. Uh, which could have been more targeted and more precisely designed to help people in need. So to really help people, and so I sort of halfway here, I, I actually agree with uh, is it Jason, that real help actually still have to come from some sort of uh, fiscal policy related uh, measure, right? Paychecks in the, in the mailbox for people who lost his jobs, people affected in certain industry, are there any relief we can give to their employers, right, to help them out. Right, so those things are less efficient to design and implement, but they are coming. But right now, we are seeing the first wave, and the majority of it is due is is, is, is thank, thanking to the efforts of the Federal Reserve. So uh, I think we need a separate monetary stimulus from fiscal. Monetary stimulus serve a very different purpose. Like I said, it's easy to fund yourself. Companies can actually not need to go to Congress anymore. Right, that's one example. The other example is that we still need fiscal stimulus to come in and target. Uh, uh, where is needed, right? So yeah. I'm actually sort of, uh, I hope that's a holistic answer to that question. No, I think it is. I think it is. Thank you, Freddie. 
Um, with that being said, thank you, Jason. Um, thank you, Gautam, for your questions. As always, we really appreciate those. Um, before we um, wrap it up here, there's a couple webinars coming up uh, in both Malaysia and in Singapore. For the Malaysian listeners, on the 26th of August um, of this month, uh, of this year, <laughs> an inside look into Stashway, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., August 26th. Um, in Singapore, on the 27th of August, we also have an inside look into Stashway webinar it's from 7 to 8 p.m. Again, links for both of those are below the video in the show notes, or you can find them on our website as well. Um, with that being said, we hope to, to be with, back with you again next week. And otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Ciao. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified whenever we have new content out for you. Also, don't forget to download the StashAway app. It's available in the Apple App Store as well as the Google Play Store. So you can start on your financial journey right now.